forgot about that. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to All the Table. All on the Table. I'm Fatter Phil, and with me is Marty this week. Uh, all on the Table is brought to you by GameItAll.com, your one stop shop for all your entertainment needs, all your video game needs. It's a great website. Uh, coming soon, we will have our uh, end of the year list where we give out our awards. We have end of the year list? Yes, we, we do. End of the year list? Yes, we do. We do. And, uh, of course, All on the Table is sponsored by the wonderful folks at Comic Hunter. Uh, go to ComicHunter.net for uh, great deals on back issues dating back to the Golden Age, magic singles, especially with uh, the upcoming uh, uh, standard events that are coming along down the pike soon. It's a good time to pick some up. So today on All on the Table, we're going to review three things. Uh, all of them expansions to existing games. The first one we'll be talking about is we'll be revisiting Love Letter. Uh, very recently, uh, I picked it up last week actually when it came out, uh, Love Letter Premium Edition, which Marty so elegantly displayed. Now uh, the thing about uh, <laughs> Premium Edition that's different from the regular edition is the addition of new cards. There is damn near an entire other deck added in. Are you just going to do Love Letter now? Or I thought you were going to introduce them all of them. Then we just well, I usually... I don't, I don't know. I don't the even know. This is the second time I've been here. The other thing, this is a new format. There's no Adam. The other thing we will uh, be talking about is the uh, new expansion to uh, Betrayal at House on the Hill, known as uh, Widow's Walk. Widow's Walk. Widow's Walk. Ooh. Traders Tome. It's really good. And finally, we'll be talking about Volo's Guide to Monsters for 5th edition D&D. Look at the fancy limited edition, edition. leather cover. Leather. The regular it's one. Leather? Well, whatever. Faux leather. <laughs> it's not even faux leather. It's just hard, hard cover. That's but, it. But, but it's got a fancy material to it. You know, it's Bare, not really. Fancy, glossy. It just has a mind flare on the, on the front. That's a it. shiny mind flare. Look, it's all Yeah, it's shiny. whatever. It's a little shiny. You know, if it was a magic card. But it's not like leather. More. <laughs> um... Say what it is. The regular version of Volos has like a storm giant on it, and it's like half off on Amazon. That's right. <laughs> but I'd rather you buy it from the comic gunner. I'd rather pay half off. Oh, I'm cheap. Yeah. On honestly, I honestly, I it's Amazon's usually a better deal for. I have I didn't buy my fucking Pathfinder core until it was eighteen dollars. So <laughs> not paying sixty bucks. Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, the first game, Love Letter, as we were talking about, it adds an entire enough cards for a new deck and expands the uh, maximum amount of players from eight to three. Uh, er, er, sorry, from four to eight. Jesus, where am I hit today? Um, the cards come in a uh, lovely new card stock, much thicker, much sturdier, really nice, really nice background art. It is sturdier, you know. Really nice background art. Marty showed them the background art. Ooh, ooh, it's so pretty. And uh, it comes with its own sleeves, which are Kinda nice cool. and stylized. The inside is silver, and the back part looks like a little love letter. Oh, isn't that fancy? Um, now, the uh, the cards get added offer a little bit more dimension to the game. Like the bishop, he's a nine. He's a nine, so the highest value in the deck is now a nine. Instead of putting another princess in, they put a nine. Zero. And uh, the values of zero. Uh, two the, zero cards. Yep. Because the deck adds, instead of adding five more guards, it adds three more guard cards and the two, two zeros. zeros. It adds Which, an equal amount of all the other numbered cards, except for the eight. Instead of the eight, it adds a nine. Yeah. But, like, Hobbit had a zero. The Hobbit version. Of yeah. Numbers. Yeah, and it was the ring. It was... What was it? It just counts as zero, and if you had it at the end of the game, it counts as a seven. Okay, that's not bad. So, so the, the only thing that could beat it was the eight. Yeah. What's the eight, Frodo? The Arkenstone. The Arkenstone. It's the Hobbit. Fro Frodo's uh, not it's Frodo. Hobbit, uh, right. Uh, Bilbo is seven. Bilbo, yeah. Yeah, I think. Bilbo. Oak and Shield is six. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, um, we played it during the weekend. It really didn't take that much longer. We only added another player, and when you do add at least another player. player, 
you have to add the entire other side deck, and it didn't really tack on that much time. It only tacked on about 10 minutes. Yeah. Well, I can't and see it. And we were trying to learn the new cards when we were doing it, so I'm pretty sure that this next go-around, even with eight players, it won't add on more than five minutes to a round of Love Letter, and really, rounds of Love Letter are barely ten minutes as it is. The whole game is like half an hour. So uh, as far as the uh, affection tokens, which are how you keep score, there's these little solid wooden red hearts that are really cool. And uh, there's a new yellow heart, which is used with the Jester card. Uh, Jester. Some of the cards have funky effects, like the uh, Jester card is a zero value card that uh, if you play on someone, uh, that person gets the yellow heart token, the Jester heart token. And if that person gets knocked out of the round, Whoever played the Jester card gets an affection token no matter what. Uh, another example of a new card is the Nine, the Bishop. It acts just like a guard, but if you manage to knock a player out, you immediately get a token, even if it's not the end of the round. It's a Nine. Mm. So it beats the Princess. It does beat the Princess if you ended up at the end with both of them. Well, so you can have the Princess and do the... I don't know what the actual names are, I just know the L5R versions. So you play the Diplomat with the Princess and you get beat by the Archbishop. Yep. That's really annoying. That'd be mm. freaking annoying. That's because the princess has nothing next to God. Sure. <laughs> hey, whatever, man. It's fucking... I see don't know. The, you see my eye roll it's there? Renaissance era... You see my eye roll? It's a Renaissance era French court, Marty. What you do you expect? My, see my eye roll? There were no bishops in the original version. No, there weren't. There weren't. But but uh, it actually lies a little bit of depth. It's very good. I uh, I enjoyed the expansion a lot. Uh, we played I did, a couple I did not hands. play it, but I am a pro at regular alpha. Uh, regular love letter? Yes, he is. We we have told tales of Marty's prowess with love letter in the past. I came from a zero to four. Fuck you, Marty. He's really bitter. About Off that. my back. Off really my back. Really he bitter. he he went from. Losing to everybody to winning four in a row off of my back. It's bitter. Okay. Bitter. Yeah, it's been what a year and a half now. <laughs> I don't know when did you buy love letter. Oh God damn. <laughs> well, how long has L five R been dead? No, it's been longer. Yeah, but I mean, that's uh, how long. Like a year now. Hasn't yeah, it? at least a year. A year. Well, it was a year at like Gen Con ish. Yeah. So, about a year, year and a half, roughly. Yeah. Yeah. Still bitter. Still bitter. It will not, uh, the bitterness will not stop until I do it to Marty. Until I defeat him four in a row. <laughs> Just play right now. Yeah, I'm sure, the, I'm sure they'd love to watch us swear the shit out of each other. Oh, actually, it wouldn't be a terrible idea to do one sometime. <laughs> Just get, like, the most aggravating people of the bunch. So Jeff, you, me, maybe, maybe, uh, James, maybe Moosey. Moosey, James. Moosey. You know. Brian, so we can have a scapegoat. So we can have <laughs> guys sit there and just lose all game. Oh, Brian. He's not even that bad at games. No, but at Love Letter, he sucks. Yeah, he know. just can't get ahead. Ah, oh, poor guy. He, he tries. He gives it the old college try, too. He, I think he needs more aggression. No aggression in the game. Maybe. More aggression or maybe more thought out? Yeah, maybe. maybe. Well, my strategy is pretty simple when I play Love Letter. It's I try to get it first. I try to beat Marty. If, if we're all tied, I beat Marty, <laughs> and then and then I try to beat whoever's in the lead at the time because that's the strategy you have to. I take. tend to do that. So. Yeah. Yeah, I just tend. Like, yeah. First target is random usually. Yeah, mine's usually random unless Marty's at the table. <laughs> bitter. <laughs> it's so bitter. More. Oh God. Yes. <laughs> Uh, as an expansion to Love Letter, it great it uh, it improves the game. Uh, you can play classic Love Letter with it because the actual components are still there. It makes it eight players, which is I like. Cause yep. One thing I hate about Love Letter is, is it was just four, four players, players max, and sometimes we have board game nights and we've got like half six, a dozen, five, half know. a dozen to ten yeah. players here. Well, yeah. You know, I mean, fuck, I'm bringing that with me to New Year's for sure. Oh yeah, New Year's. I'm bringing that with me for New Year's for sure, and we'll fucking. Do you know it's a month away down. from Christmas? Oh, Jesus. Don't fucking remind me, man. I work retail. I don't. <laughs> I, just, I just went to a, my family's thing. Black Friday tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going for Halifax. Yay! Christ. Uh, anyways, uh, so that's uh, the expansion to Love Letter. I give it a... It, it's an excellent expansion. It maintains the Love Letter score 4.5. I Does, give it doesn't take a anything 5 away. out of 5. Bearing, I have not played it. Doesn't take anything away from the game, only improves it. 
I fucking love regular love letter. Oh yeah. Well, you know, with the right skin. It's legit my one of my favorite games. It's the perfect game for me. It, had, it hits all the marks. Quick. Quick. That's the biggest one. Ease of learn, quick, strategic. You know, in a good 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 social game too. Oh and I can do and I, and I can do this. Oh yeah, he can he can do the magic player tick. I can do this. Everybody's got that. That's like a third. That's like the second best I, tick. I they, do it I do it too. I do it too like crazy. It's, it's insane. Like I, we've sat there, we've sat there during a round of love letter for like a minute straight, just I do the magic. on during our turn, just looking at each other, just trying to figure out what the move's gonna be. You know, <laughs> well, Christ. Anyway. So yeah, so that was uh, the nice. uh, premium edition of love letter. Pick yeah. it up. It's not expensive either. It's only forty bucks. Forty and bucks. Trust me, with the quality of the materials, the quality of everything. And the amount of fun you're gonna have, fuck! I would have paid regular love letter. I would have paid thirty bucks for regular love letter if I hadn't gotten it for free. Yeah, you did get it for free, I remember that. Yeah, and I gave Comic Con here like four fucking copies because I got like seven copies for free. You gave me one to me. Well, I didn't know if you wanted it at the time. I never, yeah. played, I never played it at the time. Yeah, exactly. You, you only play with us, anyways. Uh, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the uh, expansion to Betrayal at House on the Hill, the long-awaited but uh, unexpected <laughs> expansion to Betrayal at House on the Hill called Widow's Walk. It'll long away. It came out of nowhere. In it'll my be, opinion. I know that's what I mean. But we were always talking about, man, wouldn't an expansion be cool? Yeah, it would have been. You know, and then all of a sudden they announced this, and it's out like two months later. Yeah, uh, I haven't played this. Um, I played the cover's the got version. this witch, the aforementioned widow from the Widow's Walk expansion. Um, it's the same idea as Premium Love Letter. It adds Smaller a whole new stuff. floor. Is there? Can you play just playing the new ones? Yes, yes. You can automatically uh, the uh, this one here. If you just wanna just play the new ones. Just the new ones. You want to trigger the haunt. You can just uh, do that. Just do that. There's there's an expa there's an explaining on how you can just use the new cards and tiles. Cool. See, if you trigger a haunt with an omen from the base game and a room from the base game. You'll get a haunt from the base game. If you only want to play haunt from expansion, discard the omen and draw discard and discard omens until you get one from this expansion. So you just flip over the top till you get a card from the expansion to get okay. to get one of the new haunts. That makes sense. Which which is good. Which is good. Which still makes sense. I mean, the haunts are still going to get played out the right way, yeah. right? Well, I haven't played all the old haunts anyway. Yeah, exactly. So it's just but. more expansion. Uh, so yeah, all it does is it adds a whole bunch of new tiles and new functions for some tiles. Uh, it also improves glossary, so it takes a bunch of uh, item tokens and condenses them into categories. Oh yeah. So like companions, what cards will show what show outside? It clarifies which ones show outside. It clarifies what's a weapon, and it clarifies what room window. has a window. Yeah, I remember. Because some of the haunts are kind of well, some some of the, of the omens are kind of iffy that way. Not even the haunts. The uh, then the events. Yeah. Then the the roof is the new floor. Uh, when you roof, when you start play, you put the roof fire. in play. So you're on the roof. You can. Or are you it, in it, the it's, attic? it's there. Like it's one of the floors you can go to. Okay. Right, right from the get go. Um, when you uh, when you play either a top from the upper floor or the roof, they they can both go on the rooftop. Okay. So it counts as another upper floor entrance, basically. Cool. Exclusively for the roof. Um. There are several tiles that are referred to as landings. Uh, the landings are basically the starter tiles. So basement landing, grand staircase, foyer entrance hall, uh, so upper, upper landing, yeah. and the roof landing. Cool. Uh, there's two new roof sim uh, room symbols. The first one is that little square thing. That's the dumbwaiter symbol. You can spend movement to go from any tile with a dumbwaiter to another tile with a dumbwaiter. Spend it spends two movement to activate it. Oh, okay to go to uh, an adjacent floor so you can go to a dumbwaiter tile on the top floor or the bottom floor below it if you spend if you're in the basement and you activate a dumbwaiter tile you'd have to spend an extra movement for every floor beyond the, f the first one you want to go to look at the roof landing yeah Super there's the roof bossy. landing Woo! Uh, uh, and then the last symbol is a question mark if you get a, a room with a question mark symbol you can choose anything you can choose an item omen or a haunt these are all from the old yeah, see, Storm Cellar. Dumb waiter and an item. Dumb waiter and an item. useful, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Lets you get from place to place. And gives you an item. There's a cave. <laughs> Fuck the cave. Anyway. <laughs> the cave is annoying. Uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah, other than that, 
Um, that's about it. Everything else is based on your scenario or your haunt that you hit. Uh, all it does, it? yeah, we did. Which we played. We played a. We played a new one. Uh, the new one was. I think it was the first one. Let me just see the tones. It's like. Let me see the tone here. Um, which one was it? What was the question mark do again? The question mark lets you choose which one you want: an item, an event, or an omen. If you pick an omen, you have to roll a hunt. Yep. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it lets you choose what, what tile you flip from, right? It lets you choose what pile you flip from. Yeah. So if you flip a haunt, you flip a haunt. Question mark. Question mark. Actually, it's the only one I found. <laughs> I think so, there's only one. So the drawing room has one. Uh, Which one was it? Drawing room. It's where you go before you go to eat, isn't it? Oh, it says right there. Drawing room. When discovered, draw one card from any type. Yeah. Um, on it. You didn't need the question there. So if you draw an omen... Oh, I think it's Lambs of the Slaughter. 97. So if you draw an omen... On the thing... Drawing room, right? It's not there. You can't... You, you, like, you can't... Trigger a haunt in the drawing room. Right? Because it's not there. There's dungeon dining room. Oh, I guess you can't trigger so you a haunt. you can't trigger haunt in the dining room. In the dining, in, in the a, drawing, in the drawing room. So, yeah. So that's just clarifications for the rules and stuff. Uh, I, I, I don't I remember know. which haunt. It was a new one. I don't remember which one it was. was it, it was, was weeks. Yeah, it was. It was fun. It was fun. Uh, there is one haunt in there mm -hmm. where uh, it's like one of the first ones. You are basically the traitor is the is the director of a of a movie that you were playing, and all the players are a bunch of actors trying to survive this crazy director and putting them in different situations in the movie. So you, like, got hostile, basically? Yeah. Kind of? so Sawed? Sort of, except the director is just crazy dude who's still yeah, around. Yeah, all those people... All those, <laughs> the villains in those movies are crazy people. Yeah, yeah. But, uh... What is it? What is it uh, You're telling me the guy from Saw is a... Uh, yeah, the mentally other mentally stable person, you're wrong. The other explorers are actors in your magnificent horror movie, The Haunting of Hell Hotel. This is your masterpiece, and these hacks are screwing it up for you. The <laughs> omen hacks. that started the haunt conceals the document of your vision for your film. You will follow uh, its brilliance exactly as documented. Sadly, your assistant director lost it, and you sacked that fool on the spot. Now you must find it. <laughs> nice. Nice. So yeah, that's basically what the the scenario, one of those scenarios. That's just an example of scenarios. The guys from Penny Arcade wrote one. Uh, oh, they? Yeah, yeah. Um, they, they, there's like a whole bunch of guest writers that wrote, like Keith Baker wrote one. Like a whole bunch of people did. Keith Baker, mm -hmm. the dude who wrote Everon, isn't he? Yeah, I know he is. Mm -hmm. I like the guy. He also he's also making a game with this Decemberists. <laughs> with the Decemberist star, you're not hipster enough if you don't. I guess I'm not hipster enough. You're not. Anyways, uh, all it does is add more to Betrayal at House on the Hill. So, as good, it's as good as Betrayal at House on the Hill. Is, which is okay. Which is which is an okay game. Like, I give it's, it a it's, three personally. But. Yeah, it's it's three point five. I think it's fun. Like, it's fun. It's just sometimes at the end, the haunt, you're either you're gonna win or you're, gonna you, lose. you're either gonna. There's crush never it, a middle ground. You're, you're either gonna crush it or it's gonna fuck you up. Like it's so hard to, to just get a, a very even haunt. I think it's only really happened to me once. Happened to me once, and it was the the saw one. This the actual the one, saw one. You have a neck thing. And you oh, you have the neck traps. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Uh, I rem I don't know if I played it with you. I might have. Um, the only time where I ever saw it being fairly even was um, one time there was the one where uh, you have Jason as your friend and he shows up to like you you're, you're the traitor and if and Jason is your friend in the in the house and both of you have to try and trap everyone so that Jason can kill them and then when there's no one left then you and your friend can I don't know be together forever or something stupid uh, it, it was very very even and uh, it, the players won it in the end uh, cool. I don't remember if I was the traitor or not I might have been uh, so yeah, Treat it's swine. it's just it's just more of the same, but the same is good in this case. Uh, Betrayal of House on the Hill. If like actually I mean, the first game board game I played that brought me into like new 
modern board games. Modern board gaming, yeah. Like, the trailer House on the Hill is tons of fun. Uh, I've yet to meet someone who didn't actually have fun, and it's brought people who don't play into into the games. Like, when, when, when we talked about it, when we reviewed it, that still stands. Widow's Walk is a fantastic expansion. It's not very expensive. It was only about $25, and you got, like, a ton of added a ton of replayability to Betrayal at House on the Hill. I highly recommend picking it up, just like the Love Letter Premium Edition. Uh, Widow's Walk is an expansion itself. As an expansion, it's definitely a, a 4, uh, whereas Betrayal is a 3.5 game at best. But as an expansion, Widow's Walk is a 4. Marty hasn't played it yet, so... I forgot the, the legend, the legacy aspect of it. Oh, yes, the legacy aspect. Uh, the thing it also adds in is uh, there's a certain haunt that gets triggered but when you do trigger it, you write down in the, in the book, there's a, in, the, in, the, in the Trader's Tome, there's a little section, no, I don't need to put it out, there's a little section where you, where you check mark what characters are being played and w which one of these has been triggered. And there's four different ones of these haunts depending on a season. And when, when, when everyone, uh, that's the, uh, I think that's the Trader's Tome you got there. Yeah, yeah, it's not in the Trader's Tome, it's in the regular tome. Sorry. When the entire... Right there, see? You, you like all the four haunts and all the players. When that has finally all, all of those squares are filled in after you've played the game, you can then... when you Next time you trigger that haunt, the star haunt, it's called the star haunt, you can then actually play the final haunt, which the is... The actual haunt. The actual haunt, which is apparently, like, an entire story about ha all the previous games of Betrayal that you've played have been you guys on a mission going from house to house in America trying to solve all these haunted house mysteries and you find the person responsible for all of it which is some witch it's uh, it's pretty cool it adds a little legacy aspect to it so you know if, uh, a campaign from the from the way I've read like all the letters and the like there's a there's a letter from the creator in there and stuff it seems that he's not gonna make another expansion like this is gonna be it done well he wasn't planning on it it's just that one day uh the wizards of the coast contacted him and we're like want to make another one do you want to make another one and he was like well fuck sure why not and so it was so the star hunt is only available in the chard room yep you have to kill you have to trigger the chard room with uh, four different items cat key photograph or file mm -hmm. and uh yeah it's pretty cool so uh that's Betrayal at House on the Hill, Widow's Walk expansion. Uh, cool. If you like Betrayal at House on the Hill, pick it up. It only adds to the game. Uh, finally, uh, we have the uh, the feature <laughs> presentation. Uh, the only original book here, although it is technically an expansion to a current game. Volo's Guide yes. to Monsters. It's, it's the first official 5th edition. Oh, yeah. God, the lithids. Love them. You're gonna have to fight one. Next I week. sure can. Next next week, that's Marty's. It's not my first, and it won't be my last. That's Marty's final campaign boss encounter for for their Wednesday game. Yeah, I'm probably gonna die anyway. You might. It's gonna be tough. Not not, not the glo the kitty gloves are off. So Volo's Guide to Monsters. Say that the, so many times, I lost all meaning. The Just the see. aforementioned Volo is a. NPC character from, from olden days. From the olden days of second the second edition, I think. From the Forgotten Realms. Yeah, he was created in the in the Forgotten Realms, and by he's Ed Greenwood, I assume. Uh, everything's by Green Greenwood, <laughs> except for except for the Driss shit. That's Salvatore. <clears throat> All Sal. Um, Sally Sal. So Volo is uh, an explorer, and he has all kinds of cover identities and disguises in almost every location in the Forgotten Realms, which is the campaign world that he's from, and also the core campaign world for 5th edition D&D. UNT, snake people. Uh, now, the thing about Volo is he studies these places and writes books about them. So there's like a Volo's Guide to the Underdark, Volo's Guide to Benzo Baranz, and Volo's Guide to Candlekeep, Volo's Guide... Place, I forget the call. I don't know, Karator? No, man. No, wait. Mulholland? Uh, Mulholland, or whatever the fuck that's so, called. Uh, I met a cleric from that place once. Yeah, and uh, so he's very famous, and in this particular book is his update. He has been returned to the forefront of the Monster Guides, and this time, he has a friend. The Elminster, the Sage of Shadowdale, has helped him write this book. 
So in throughout the book, interspersed in several pages, are little commentaries by Volo and then Elminster. Like there's one part where he's like, "I wonder what mind flayer brains taste like," and then Elminster replies with, "You don't need to know that. They're poisonous and they will uh, render you insane with a just a stream of thought." Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> Don't ask me. So, uh, basically, the layout of the book is great. Uh, the first chapter of the book is a bunch of... Um, Mind Flayers, Scourge of the World. Is it, it, yeah, it's a bunch of... Uh, monster lore. Mon- giants, monster lore about different creatures. Gnolls, goblinoids, I assume bugbears and yep. all sorts of things. Yep, all of them are in there. Hags, kobolds, mind flayers, orcs, and UNT snake. So they basically choose like the biggest overarching categories of D&D monsters. Probably the ones that are used the most in, in campaigns, the most frequently. Yeah, I guess. The Except ones that, for, ha- I that know, have... I've, I don't see a lot of UNT. Personally. UNT? Well, to be quite honest... Like, the least used. almost every D&D game on, like, the Xbox and stuff have a UNT level. I never... I remember D&D Heroes. Heroes. D&D Heroes, like, UNT. like, level three of D&D Heroes is nothing but UNT. Chapter three is nothing but UNT. Oh, well, whatever. You Golden. go through the jungles of Chult and start fucking killing shit. Yeah. Only lizard people ever find D&D or lizard folk. Which have a chapter. Not chapter, but... Uh, they do have a blurb in there. They have a page. Yep. So uh, it talks about monsters all of these the ecologies and these monster behaviors and how they do things, and how their society works. So it's very well written. Uh, it's not necessarily written in Volo's in in character, but there are enough snippets and little uh, side no- sidebars that it could very well be like extra notes written by Volo. Um, and they're, they're always funny. They're always entertaining. Uh, my particular favorite was the Beholder chapter. The Beholder chapter is really cool. Um, I did not know how Beholders reproduce, but this chapter told me how. It's very cool. Basically, a Beholder is a giant floating right. eyeball with nine little eye stalks, or eight little eye stalks that float off to the side of it, like off of it, attached, attached to it. Uh, the middle eye creates a field of anti-magic so no magic can be used but each of his eyes each have a different magical effect so he can close his central eye and he can shoot like in the game he shoots three at a time but he can technically shoot like eight beams at a time eight different effects so he's like really versatile they're really tough to kill they have a lot of hit points and like you never know what they're going to do next so it's like you you could be ready for you could be prepared for like a frost beam, and then all of a sudden he petrifies you. Or you could be, um, you could be like coming at him, and then all of a sudden the rogue gets hit by the charm eye beam, and then the rogue turns on the party. Things like that. They're 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 very difficult. So um, the thing about a beholder is how they reproduce. The cool part about it all is when a beholder dreams of another beholder, it essentially spawns. <coughs> A beholder, like it buds, and when it wakes up, the beholder comes to life, and they fight each other. And either one of them, whichever beholder dominates the other one, if he <coughs> kills them outright, then he remains the current beholder. However, most of the time, they'll end in a relative stalemate, and the one that seems to be losing will wander off and start his own lair and his own nest. And uh, different types of dreams that beholders have will spawn different kinds of beholders. There's if they dream of death, they will spawn an undead beholder, which Jesus fuck is so brutally hard to kill. Uh, if they dream, if they if they get attacked and they dream uh, when they're wounded, they'll spawn like a type of beholder that uh, basically has serrated blades all over itself, <coughs> and, it, and it hits people with these tentacle serrated blades and drains them. It's pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah, the, it covers a whole bunch of different races that Marty named off earlier. Uh, it made me really, like, at first there were some races I would just dismiss and be like, eh, they're not interesting enough. They're, they're cool monsters and all, but they're not interesting enough. But after reading this book, I want to run something with gnolls. I want gnolls to be a bad guy because they are cool as balls, man. They're dog things. You think that's all they are, right? Yeah, yeah. probably. No, way more to them than that. Gnolls are created. I, no, no, no. I don't care. Uh, it's I awesome. Don't 
fucking care. Well, you'll care in character someday. Probably. <laughs> right now. Right now you don't. I don't. So Because uh, every goddamn monster has a background, Phil. They do. They do. Every last one. Oh. Why are you surprised that Knowles had one? Well, no, it's not that they had one. It's just I thought they were just going to be lame. I thought they were just going to be like some weird goblinoid that was almost not a goblin. But it turns out they have like this ridiculously cool origin. Cool. Yeah. I guess. And how they're spawned and shit. Their society is just cool as fuck. And actually, I didn't know bugbears were so awesome. I thought they were just really big goblins. You know, they're, they're like, does, your, does the goblins you fight need a brute? Send a bugbear in there. Turns out... You played for like 20-some years of D&D and you didn't know any of these monsters' backgrounds. It's not that I didn't know. It's that they really didn't release anything... I have a hard time really. that deep about them. Like they, they released the guide to aberrations, which talk about a lot about like beholders and mind flayers and stuff like that. Yeah. Most of the beholder and mind flayer stuff in there, I already knew, but like they, they never covered reproduction, right? Yes. So when they talked about beholder reproduction, I was like, that is fucking cool. I guess you know. But everything in there about mind flayers was already in the book of aberrations in three point five. So there was nothing in that book that was new about mind flayers. I knew all that information already. Anyway. It's just they kind of updated a little. Let's go to the actual interesting part. <laughs> the <laughs> mechanical stuff. Then, after that, that's just the fluff that's in the book, which is pretty much a third of it. Fuck the fluff. Character <laughs> races. For me, including it's not fluffy. Azimar, Azimir, Furblog, blah, 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 Furblog, they're, they're a type of giant. They're a giant kin. Uh, Goliath, Kenku, Lizardfolk, Tabaxis, which is catfolk, and Triton, which is like a mermaid kind of. Merfolk mermaid, type of merfolk. thing. Yeah. And Monstrous Adventures, mm-hmm. like orcs and such. Yep. Uh, so yeah, you can play all those goblinoids. Uh, you can play. ASMR is really cool. Yeah, I saw uh, that. ASMR, people were looking for that for a long time. Uh, ASMRs are kind of like the opposite of tieflings. Tieflings are demonic blooded. ASMRs are angel blooded. Uh, you can be a special butterfly. Tieflings are the favorite. Hmm? Tieflings are the favorite though. Tieflings are the favorite. People like to be demonic blooded more, more than angelic blooded. But I, I've always found ASMR to be a far more useful race. Yeah, seriously. Um. But uh, yeah, you can you can really uh, throw a little variety in there. Uh, I found Shroud. most of the from everything I've looked at, most of their races are very balanced. They're very cool. Uh, even like the furbog, like they're a giant blooded creature. They're like a fairy giant type of thing, and they're still pretty cool. Um, the cat folks seem okay, although they they're gonna be broken ass rogues. Kenku are fantastic fighters, uh, even though that's not what they're built to be. I don't know about lizard folk. I never really liked lizard folk as a character option. It just it's just why, why, why play a lizard folk when you could be a dragonborn? Because you don't want to be a dragon. Sometimes you just want to be a lizard. Do you? Yeah. Mm. Why not? I made, a, I made a couple of lizard folk. Like a monitor I made lizard. One. Just make once. Make a lizard folk with like the Two the fucking sessions. the fucking gills there. That when you get pissed off, when you get in, when you get like emotional, they just go fly, fly, I made, fly. I made the <laughs> the small ones, the ones that are really good really roads. With clicky noises, like clicky noises all the time. I guess lizard folk would be that bad if you just make them super eccentric. Well, yeah, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> I made the little like the little like uh, skittery ones. Skittery ones, yeah. Because they got natural AC. It's cool. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, Tabaxi, you're just cat folk. And they're just slim cat folk. Cat folk. They're they're pretty cool too. Um, I, I've never been much for a cat folk yeah, thing. Yeah, I'm not a furry. Some people liked it. Some people really like it. You know, Mike. They seem pretty good. Mike. Mike and his Ronso shit. Fuck you, Mike. I play my. I like turning Mike. into a Ronso. You turned, turned him into a Ronso. I know I did because he wanted to be one. Because he his ability sucked up until he one shot something. Until he one shot something, yes. Uh, Tritons again. They're like blue skinned merfolk. Tritons. They look weird. This picture is not that great. Yeah. In my opinion. That, this picture does not make me appeal to this uh, race. Playing aquatic born races is kind of problematic when you're playing a surface world game because well, a lot of them need to be around salt water or whatever doesn't, all doesn't, often. doesn't seem to be need to be all around water. No, it's just amphibious. Yeah. You can breathe what, air and water. Is it? Mm-hmm. And of course, there's a full guide to playing goblinoids and kobolds in there. So you know, you want to run a little monster campaign. It's always cool to run it with goblinoids and stuff because we be goblins. We be goblins. Pathfinder has at least like four of them. Four of them, but it's take. successful, man. Like it's, yeah. they're, they're fun. They're I, fun I, little romps. I played one of them. I played the alchemist. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> they're fun. They're, they're, things. They're, they're great little romps. Uh, but so they're goblin, kobold, or goblin. Orcs and UNT. Orcs and UNT, yeah, so you can play them. 
Uh, you can only play Yuanti Pure Blood because the rest of them are all like super powerful. Are they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How is a Pure Blood less powerful than the non Pure Blood? Uh, because you're not bred. Like the way the Pure Bloods are bred, it's to preserve like the that lineage. When you breed a non Pure Blood, it's like you're breeding it with a demon or a dragon. Or you're something breeding, stronger, you're breeding it with something stronger. So you're not pure blooded, but it doesn't mean you're less strong. It just means you're not just a yuan t. Okay. And I think they can assume uh, more of a humanoid. Yeah, they just look humanoid. Mm -hmm. Whereas the other ones all have like either four arms or a snake body or they're us talking snake or something, something weird. You can imagine this. That's pretty good. Oh yeah, man. They like, it's good. The, the, the thing just says uh, if you're going to allow some of these monstrous races, be careful as a DM because they might be slightly unbalanced in certain situations. Thank God there's nothing with wings yet. It's that bird in the other books. Oh, there's a Kenku in there too. Does a Kenku fly? I don't think so. Fuck, I hope not. Ugh, I hate flying PCs. I hate it so much. They don't. But, uh... Until like level 8... Eight or nine, I just don't want to deal with flying PCs. It's yeah, just as, fucking annoying. One of the Am uh, as, as a can fly as a, like an action for a minute. That's not bad. Yeah. Oh, that's that's like in a round you can get up somewhere real out of range yeah, or something. Flying speed to thirty feet. Uh, blah blah blah. You do extra eighty damage too. You can attack cast spells. I like the Azamar. They're pretty cool. You're gonna play one, aren't you? Out of the lizard folk. Or the lizard folk. Put the get the fins. Just shh. shh, shh. I love that. Just make a ranger. Make a ranger laser folk. Laser folk ranger. Uh, oh, be more. Ranger. Can you be more tropey? I always play tropes. You know this. Fuck. Like, come on. <laughs> have, have you not seen me not play tropes? After after that section, which is the second section, there's the final section of the book, which is monster. Which is actual monsters monster for, for the encounter. They're basically all the monsters that were like in the descriptive. Unicorn. It's a thing. Kirin. It's a Kirin. It's a super unicorn. It's a Kirin. Those of us who play L5R know them as the unicorn clan. Clan as, as a unicorn. It's a fucking super unicorn. It's a super unicorn. Basically. Yeah, it's pretty badass. Uh, but uh, I like the. Um, and then the monster manual is basically all cow. They talk about <laughs> all the monsters from the previous sections, but m more specialized versions of them. So like. All of the specialized beholders, all the specialized mind flayers. Uh, there's a couple of unique monsters in there that weren't in the other ones. Um, Quarter. Then in the uh, first appendix, it's a bunch of like. Plus six to hit. Wow, cows are pretty good. A, bu <laughs> a bunch of mundane monsters like aurochs, cows, things like that, pack animals. Uh, like, because there's some races that ride aurochs in battle. Yeah. Like, orcs ride aurochs in battle, and sometimes. So, you need the stats for the mount so that. People will know how to deal with it. Cranium uh, rat. Cranium rats are uh, rats that mind flayers make a little bit smarter and send into cities so that they like can tell people. Shit. Yeah, so they can tell people like what's going on and stuff. Darklings. Darklings, which are really cool little fake creatures. I always like darklings. Darklings are, are nice little halfling type creatures that uh, move in shadows and stuff. And they're assassins. Uh, they're pretty cool. Uh, and of course, fuck, they must have listened to somebody because they didn't run the first monster manual, but the, the final chapters of this book in the appendix, they finally listed all the monsters from the book in, uh, CR by their challenge rating, by their environment, and then by their monster type. So, you think they why know couldn't how to you do this? fucking do that in the first they did, monster did, manual? Didn't they do it in third edition? I'm like almost sure they did in one of the monster manuals. They did it in 3.5, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Like all the monster manuals in third and third point five were. Yeah. Fuck, I'm pretty sure fourth edition did it that way too. I didn't. I didn't particularly like their indexing in the fucking player's handbook anyway in fifth. Yeah, because it's yeah. like it's it's like attack, see action. It's like, really? <laughs> <laughs> really? See action? You can't just see type action. the number instead. See action. See action. Like, yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> Enduring renewal. See loop continuous. <laughs> loop continuous. See enduring renewal. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Vola's Guide to Monsters is the best D&D book, the best RPG book I've seen all year. Uh, it's so fucking good. I cannot, I cannot suck its dick enough. To me, it's a monster manual with player races. It is. It is, but I love fluff. 
but he loves fluff. I love fluff. I don't hate fluff. Mm -hmm. I just like to take fluff slowly through the game. Through the game. Well, my Not through the book. You're a player. I'm a DM. This, this. I've DM'd. Yes, but... I'm DMing now. Yes, but what do you prefer? Playing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Every time. See, I love playing. Don't get me wrong. I love playing, but my bread and butter is the DM. I gotta tell the story. Fuck that. I gotta know what's going on. I don't want to be bothered. <laughs> I'd rather make the character and have my progression. I love the progression. It's fine, man. Progression it's a, is like the best thing. I problem. want, I want to do things and get a little reward, and do more things and get another reward. Tell me, That's tell what me I this. Want. Tell me this though. What? Aren't I fun to play with? Yeah. Of course you are. I want to be playing with you if you weren't. <laughs> like, like fucking. Remember the Biggie Smalls Mercenary Company? Uh, that was good. Oh, it's great. Because he was a halfling barbarian and I was a human fighter, and we had a mercenary company, so we were Biggie Smalls. I go for the tropes. I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> What was your name? Alton Smalls? Yeah, Alton Smalls. Alton Smalls. That's Alton. why it was called Smalls. It had nothing to do with his size. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Just a little. But uh, that was great. It was super fun. Uh, that was dumb as fuck, man. I like playing dumb yeah, characters. Yeah, dude, you were a dumb fucking half. You were a dumb, dumbass. It's so fun to play dumb characters sometimes. Oh, Jesus. It's just... Remember, were you there when we playtested play Fifth and I wasn't DMing? When it was like, you guys find it yet? I played the stupid, stupid fighter, and everybody went ahead and scout. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, everybody went ahead to scout to try and find a secret passage, and, and there it was, guarded by two guys, and they go over there, and they're trying to sneak over, and my character's waiting on top of the hill, you know, was from hiding, from a perfect hiding spot, and then they're just, just they're about to do something. My character yells out, Are you guys done yet? Or did you find it yet? And, uh, of course, that alerted the guards. I think I played, I played, I played the rogue, for sure. <laughs> and, of course, that alerted the guards. So, you know. <laughs> but that's the love. That's the love of role-playing, man. It's fun. It's part of it. It's great. It's fantastic. <laughs> sometimes sometimes you want to be strategic. You want to win that fight. But not everybody is a strategic mind. Yeah. Tell it the mic. Oh. <laughs> it's like don't go I did it Mike I don't give a shit I did <laughs> don't it go there. Uh, don't go there uh, you know who's good at that Shaggy Shaggy's yeah. really good at, <laughs> yes. Shaggy's really good at portraying different types of intelligence in the game he great, did a great high wisdom low end character fucking phenomenal phenomenal knew exactly what to do uh, Shaggy should be an actor fuck this physics but instead guy. he's a master of lasers master of lasers straight up actually straight up master of lasers degree and everything he's a piece master's. of paper that says it Absolutely. Uh, enough talking about our friends and their playing habits. We'll, we'll do an episode about that sometime. Uh, so, Polo's Guide to Monsters 5. It's my first perfect 5. I, I love it. I think it's great. It's so good. It has everything I want in a monster manual. Because that's what I want in a monster manual. I want enough fluff, enough fluff to make it interesting. And, and really, there's only about half a dozen pages for everything, for each thing. Yeah, probably. Right? It's got a great array of monsters with alternate alternate types of those monsters and it's got some player options in it you you can't have a book without some player options in it like i'm sorry we'll but <laughs> D, D is a player's game it's yeah. a player's game one dm multiple it's just one dm multiple players the dm can just do something with it the dm's supposed to be good enough <laughs> to do something with it uh and that's why I like Volo's Guide. That's why I would recommend players to take it. Don't you know if you're not going to run it? Don't look at the monsters too deeply, but definitely look at the the player options, the character options. Like I, I just know the monsters because I fought. <laughs> yeah, well, you know we're veterans, but you know new players like uh, they don't know. Yeah, they don't. They don't know what they're like. They're like, fuck. What what's what's uh, what's a displacer beast weakness? You know, what's the best way to handle I, I, this? I kind of, I kind of miss that though sometimes. Yeah. Like not knowing. I mean, sometimes. Hey man, that's the life you live. Yeah. That's the part of the RP challenge, right? You know, he don't. No. You know, or she, whatever. It. It. Whatever you, you want, whatever you want to play at the time. <laughs> Pronouns. Got it. Pronouns. They're hard. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so all in all, I definitely recommend a buy. Uh, I got the special edition, so it's like 60 bucks, but the regular version of the book is like 40 uh, I Luckily, I got a deal. I got the special edition for the price of the regular edition because I'm tight with some boys. Tight with some boys. Mm -hmm. So it's a little sexual, but whatever. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I didn't say that. That was not double entendre or nothing. Mm -hmm. So uh, that. that's it for uh, All on the Table this week. Uh, we reviewed uh, Love Letter, Betrayal... 
at House on the Hill's expansion and Volo's Guide to Monsters. Uh, All in Tables brought to you, of course, by GameItAll.com, uh, presented by GameItAll.com, your one-stop shop for all your entertainment and video game needs. And, of course, we are sponsored by the lovely folks. Oh, this side. Lovely folks at Comic Hunter. It's a mirror. It's a way. mirror. I know, I know. I just realized that. Like, I've been staring at it for like 45 minutes. Just realized it's a mirror. Uh, the wonderful folks at Comic Hunter.net. Uh, just go visit their website. Great deals on all kinds of stuff. Um, please join me again next week, um, where I will be covering my favorite RPG. And Wait, can I guess? Uh, my favorite RPG in game setting of all time. Can I guess? Yes, you can. Can I guess? Go ahead. How many guesses do I get? One. L5R. Boom. <laughs> Yay! We'll be talking about Legend of the Five Rings and how awesome it is. <laughs> can I be there? Yes, you can. Absolutely. Uh, if it's before my bedtime. Uh, no, we're, we're probably going to film it on the weekend. Uh, we'll probably film it Saturday. This Saturday? Maybe. Like tomorrow, like two days from now. Yeah. I know. I'm not in town. Maybe Sunday. I'm not uh, doing anything Sunday. I don't Sunday. know how when I'll be back in town. Why are we recording this? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we can talk this later. <laughs> we'll talk about this later. So yes, next uh, the next episode will be about Legend of the Five Rings, which I love to death. So uh, which I also love actually. But yes. So uh, I don't think I love it as much as Phil. <laughs> it's uh, Marty and Fatterfill signing out. Bye.